Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Dan Sullivan speaking. I happen to be the RVP uh, for the Eastern Region for Conducive Technology. Uh, and excited to uh, be hosting the session today and, and having you all join us. So thanks very much for doing so. Uh, a bit of a different format than our usual webinars, so it's exciting to, to have uh, those that have uh, joined us in previous webinars and, and hopefully downloaded the NFR copy of our uh, patented IO reduction software to join us because we spared no expense today to have uh, two uh, senior technologists from Conducive join us. Uh, first uh, and foremost, Rick Kadrubi is with us. Rick is our chief architect. Uh, he's been with the company since its inception and uh, he's going to be taking you through a live demo and hopefully answering some of your, your Q&As that you'll put in and by the way, you'll see uh, a Q&A box uh, on the screen. Um, so as you were in the previous webinars, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to put any of your questions in the box. Uh, that no question's a bad one uh, because we have the senior technologists here uh, to join us today. Rick, are you out there? I am here, Dan. It's good to be Great. on board. Well, yep, and thank you very much for joining. And also, folks, uh, we have uh, GQ, uh, a.k.a. Gary Kwan, joining us today, too. Gary is our SVP of Technology Strategy, uh, and he's, he's here to bolster uh, Rick, and also both Rick and Gary are to keep me honest here in this discussion. GQ, are you there? I am here, Dan, and glad to join the group here. Well, that's great. So, again, as I mentioned, we have a very different format today and excited to have you with us. Um, We've gone through our introductions. We're going to do just a very quick uh, velocity recap as to what the, what the enhancements have been that, that Rick and GQ's team have delivered. We'll roll right into the live demo uh, by Rick. Um, so that will be a great time, too, to ask any questions in the Q&A box. We'll take those later on, and we'll talk a little bit about what next steps might be. So with that, you know, I just want to give you a quick heads up here as to, again, what, what Rick and his team had put together with our latest releases of Velocity. Um, as you know, and hopefully some of you have experienced, you know, we guarantee to solve your toughest performance problems, uh, and most customers are seeing 2x faster SQL performance and sometimes even greater. Uh, very exciting with the release of Velocity 7 is the ability to install the software in the OS without a reboot. Uh, and I'm hopefully, again, you've all experienced how flawless that has been going, uh, and, that's, and that's how it's been going. Uh, we've had customer after customer and new customers, existing customers upgrade or install on the fly, takes minutes, and the software begins optimizing immediately. Very, very incredible enhancement from Rick, GQ, and their teams. The benefits dashboard that shows you what our software is doing for you, how much storage time saved is being delivered back to your systems, et cetera, and Rick will take us through that. The memory tuning alerts that are part of the new release, and with the Velocity Management Console, a single pane to view all your systems. And just again, while we have many, many customers uh, upgrading and installing without reboots, you can see there from Blake Smith at, at Christus Health, they have almost 3,000 servers with our solutions on it. Christus is one of the largest healthcare institutions in the state of Texas. Uh, and you can see here how easy that has been for them to upgrade their environment and install new on the fly. So really very, very exciting. So actually just again, quick recap. And what I'm uh, very happy to do right now is get the sales guy off the line and turn this over to Rick, who's going to take you through a live demo of the, of the, the Velocity solution, dashboards, et cetera. Again, any Q&As for Rick or GQ, please put them in the box. Rick, take it away. Okay. Well, it's good to have you all aboard. And... Um... I'm the presenter now. Give me a second to uh, share my screen. I have a screen set up with several different things. Um, and here we go. We're 
you should be seeing the uh, my screen now. <clears throat> yep. And um, what I've got here is the the I've got a bunch of different things on this screen, but it's it's so that I can go and look at different kinds of things. This is our main dashboard in the in VMC, the Velocity Management Console. So we've done some updates in the last version, specifically aimed at um, uh, specifically aimed at uh, improving the user experience. So our underlying software is really about and always has been set it and forget it. In fact, I think years ago we registered a trademark uh, on set it and forget it. And so what we do is we just want to make your soft, your systems perform better. We want to do it in a way that hopefully you never really have to notice us. But obviously, you need to know what the benefits are and all that. And that's what the dashboard's about. And I'm going to flip just temporarily to another system where you can see essentially the dashboard on the local system looks the same as the main one. We've added some tool tips to make it easy for you to get information. Things like, what does it really mean IO is eliminated? What, what are we really saying here? You know, storage IO time saved. What are we really trying to relate here <clears throat> in terms of, of that? So we put in some tool tips to try to make a simple explanation. Obviously, we have help and you can get more information as needed. <clears throat> um, one of the things you can do is, as Dan said, you can get a view of the whole thing. We've actually extended the information that's available in the, the number of columns so you can get a better view. All of the columns in this particular view are sortable. So I can look at, let's say I'm most concerned about workload. I can see that, okay, I want to see the, the highest workload systems because maybe what you really care about is, am I getting performance on the things that I, I care about the most, i.e., the systems that are doing the most workload. Um, by the way, this particular setup just um, up front is just a specific setup I did on my local system with a series of VMs. I have a domain controller and whatever um, just for this. So this is none of this is intended to be, we have really huge workloads. You'll notice the workloads aren't all that much and stuff like that. But, but I can sort these columns how, on any of these columns you want. Um, you can do that. Um, you can also save, uh, you can also download the benefits. I've got a, uh, we actually download to a, a CSV file. And so you can have all of the systems you've got selected and you can get this data so you can process it, play with it, do whatever our, um, our solutions engineers will ask you during dashboard reviews to send this so they can um, help uh, quantify the, the information a lot better, but you, you have this data available if you want, uh, and it's actually more data in the benefit CSV than it would be um, in the standard, um, in, uh, in the stand, in the standard set of columns that's in the, in the dashboard. So um, those are some things we've added just to make it easier for you to, to deal with, okay, what am I really getting out of this product? <clears throat> Um, the, the dashboard essentially has three, three main tabs. Um, the main dashboard has, gives you the summary of what have we really been doing for you. You can do um, since installation, last 24 hours, last seven days. You can do different kinds of, of time frames. Um, so let hey, Rick, this is GQ. I know some of our users are probably just, they may have just used the individual UIs or local UIs. So with this VMC, you can choose, uh, you know, many of those individual installations, and then it'll give you a summary of that in, in that dashboard. Is that correct? Right, uh, and, and that's essentially what you're doing here. You're selecting systems. I can I can change it, and let's say I only want to see this uh, my dom what's happened on my domain controller, which is this particular system. I can save the selection. And now what will happen when it comes up is all I'm seeing here is that is that particular system. So yeah, I can select whatever systems I want, which is one of the reasons why being able to sort these columns is useful because I noticed that let's say that the highest workload one 
is this one, and maybe that's the only one I want to see. Yeah, I can change and see just the ones I want or see a summary of a bunch of them. If this, uh, if I were to have all three of the systems, then these numbers are essentially a summary of all of them. So yes, Gary, that's true. Great, thank you. Okay, so the IO performance tab kind of gives you basic IO performance metrics. We tell you how much the total workload is, and we'll tell you this in gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, whatever, depending on how much workload you've had, how much memory is on the systems, what the data has come from caching as a result of, of from our cache directly, how much actual data has come out of our cache. Now, one thing to, worth understanding is our caching technology is looking for the highest bang for the buck. We're not looking to get all of the data to come, not that we can't, but what we're looking for is given the amount of memory that's available, so let's say extra memory that SQL's not using, if that's your particular interest, how can we give you a significant additional bang for the buck? So, so that's really more how many IOs are we eliminating rather than how much actual data we're processing, because we're going to look for noisy IOs that are going to get in the way of the IOs you actually have to, to send to your storage array so that those IOs that you care about actually complete faster. Um, the, we, we give you average min-max on IOPS, uh, on the megabytes per second, what your latencies are, and then we tell you for that particular system or series of systems what the read-write percentage is. You know, are you predominantly a write intensive application or are you predominantly a read intensive application? So you'll be able to get that kind of data. And then we have an analytics thing. Now this will take a second pop up. It has to do with, uh, in full disclosure, it has to do with the library we use to paint these uh, particular things. Um, and this just gives you a whole bunch of individual things uh, based on 24 hour periods. So you can see the benefit and Typically, what you're going to want to look for is where, you're, where you have the most serious amount of throughput. So that would be here, um, or in megabytes per second or something. Are you getting benefit during those times? So are we satisfying data from cache? Are, you, are we eliminating IOs during those periods? Another thing, just as a fun thing exercise to do, and this is just the geek in me, so I, I apologize up front for that. But I've analyzed thousands of customers um, data from, from their systems. And one of the interesting thing with your end users that you will see is you will have periods of time that it's really clear when they work and when they don't work. It's just kind of a fun thing in looking at these, uh, these uh, analytics stuff. So, um, so that's the, basically what data we present to you in terms of what we do, the fragments prevented and eliminated our, our IntelliWrite technology, and then if we decide that you have files that really do need quote unquote defragmenting, we will do that. Now the way that works years ago, of course we tried to defragment pretty much everything, but a long time ago we realized that was a fool's errand. Data was, your, the size of your data were getting larger, your systems, your disks, your volumes, so what we do is we actually have technology internally that says, let's track what's going on on the system. And if there is a specific file that because of split IOs or because of the way it's doing sequential IO, we could improve the overall performance of the system, we will target just those. And we have an engine that internally we call just in time, I think marketing sales calls it. Um, uh, I don't remember, I actually don't remember what they call it, but but there's a specific technology, and, and what we call it is just in time for our purposes, because what it is is we have literally noticed as you're running that there is a particular file or series of files that cause problems, and that's causing performance problems because of fragmentation. So we only target those. We don't target the whole thing. We're not trying to do a, a ton of work in the background. We're trying to be as specific as we can to cause a to, to get you the maximum performance. On the prevented, we have this in IntelliWrite technology that literally 
is monitoring what's going on in the system and it gives the file system feedback saying this user's tr this particular application or whatever is trying to extend a file is trying to create new data in a file is trying to extend a file you might want to think about doing it more effectively you might want to over extend this in such a way that you're actually going to not cause additional fragmentation which will cause performance so that when writes are done or when reads are done they're being done as a single IO operation and and you might say well I have you know flash memory or something like that I have you know much fat I have SSDs and stuff does that really matter well interestingly enough when SSDs were first starting to really hit the marketplace we actually did some work specifically for some SSD manufacturers and, and one of the things we found out it was a total byproduct of the work it was not something we expected was that the file system starts to run into serious problems once fragmentation gets more than a certain level so so IntelliWrite still provides tremendous uh, uh, tremendous value to you um, despite whatever kind of underlying um, layer of of stuff that you have out there um, just because the file system itself starts to get bogged down if it has to perform too many operations to collect the data that you're trying to do so so that's what the fragments prevented and eliminated free space is consolidated there are some very specialized uh, applications that run into serious um, problems due to free space in fact it's one of the areas we're working on now is we've discovered that in a lot of cases the problems you're going to run into in the future have very little to do with your data it has a lot to do with the file with the uh, the file system and its metadata and the way that free spaces get badly fragmented and so we have technology for that and and that's kind of what that does so so that's that particular thing I'm going to I actually run DiskKeeper on my system. I have a, a pretty high-end desktop because I'm a developer and I I do stuff. And so I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. You know, this is just since May, and I don't run DiskKeeper 24/7. And the reason is I do certain operations where I need to have DiskKeeper not do its job. So I I need to guarantee because of my debugging or whatever I'm working on that it hasn't pre-done something that I'm trying to to accomplish but just since that period of time I've had a workload of 133 terabytes um, I've satisfied uh, uh, nearly seven terabytes directly from cache and this is just running day to day and I'm doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't in any way shape or form because I'm restoring volumes constantly specialized test volumes I'm creating test volumes those kinds of things aren't things you'd expect to get but just in that period of time, I've I've saved in storage IO and in, in time that it would take to go out to the my storage subsystem and and do work. I've saved 24 days of storage time. I've eliminated nearly five billion IOs. So that's just kind of my thing. I've prevented and eliminated 3.3 um, million fragments. So you know it. And that's just my personal system. This is my desktop that I do work on. And yeah, I kind of I do a lot of I/O because I'm doing I'm constantly doing work to try to make sure that that our software. I mean, I'm I'm basically doing development and and debugging, and I'm making sure the guys that work for me that their software is doing the right thing. So I'm constantly running these tests. And but this is just on my personal system. And yeah, do I notice it personally? the the improvement absolutely so that's um that's kind of just my own personal story okay um i'm going to take just a second here because i want to show one thing i'm going to go to i think it's this one i want to do and i'm going to um, stop our software running on that particular system <clears throat> and uh, in a second here I'm going to refresh um, back here. I'm not. Oh, I'm actually. I'm showing that one. I'll go ahead and do the um, 
do all of these systems. So I'm going to save this selection. That's going to actually cause an update of the data. Um, selected systems. Oh, I didn't select it. I unselected it. Sorry. Um, okay. Okay, hold on a second. Don't you just hate when things don't really do what you're kind of expecting them to do? Save the selection. Yes. Well, anyway, what I wanted to show you, and for some reason it's not cooperating today, is that we actually notice things like the system, like the software is not running correctly on the end node on an end node system, um, and that was really what I was trying to do. So there are a bunch of extra helps that, when you're running, will actually do so that we can um, so that we can make sure that. We can display things and, and let you know that there are problems. Um, we have these report queues here, and we can show you, oh, actually, this is going to show me that there was a dashboard update problem. It's probably going to tell me that it couldn't communicate with that. Yeah, two of three systems select su successful. So we put effort into making sure that you can kind of manage this and that, that it doesn't just go, even though it's set it and forget it, that you're not stuck with um, that you can't tell that something's not really working correctly. Um, and we will have these, uh, let me go to, let me go to this screen. So you'll get things like this product alert here. Okay, this is saying there's a driver that's not attached. That you'll see these kinds of icons and it'll give you some sense that there's some kind of a problem here. Um, and if I update results now on this system, I'm going to guess that that went to green. Yeah, so the problem was resolved as a result of that. So we've tried to put in additional things to make your job easier. Um, if there is a problem and you're noticing, you don't really think you're getting benefit on a particular system or you notice something, that there's some some basic things that you that will tell you, okay, there's a problem here. So if you end up having to call our tech support um, we can uh, we can quickly get in front of things and make sure that uh, things are good for you. So that's kind of my uh, my uh, uh, presentation. So I'm going to uh, turn it back to Dan and Gary. And hey, Rich, I, I see one question here, and maybe maybe you can bring the. Uh, Leave that uh, live demo up because they're asking, you know, if I'm monitoring many systems, I got, I don't know, Velocity installed on uh, several systems, how can I go see which ones are, you know, providing benefits and maybe what systems I may have to add some memory to uh, because there's, there's not sufficient memory on there to uh, get the caching benefits? So you're asking a really good question, Gary. And essentially, in the in the I/O performance tab, either of VMC or in so so actually, if I go to this display here, this system status here. Uh, you may have to share your uh, screen again, Rick. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No problem. Somebody took it back. My screen. Uh, let me show it. Sorry. Um, there it is. Thank you. So in VMC, if I go to, I'll cancel and go back. And, and so we got there through selecting systems. Um, so I have these systems. I have this system status data here. And what the system status data here is going to be a, a red, yellow, or green. And I mean red, yellow, yeah, red, yellow, or green. If it's yellow or red, it's essentially going to tell you in the pop-up what the issue is. And one of the things that we do do, and, and one of the things that I'm sorry that I didn't get really correctly set up, um, in a prior demo, my, my DC, which is uh, right here, I think, um, didn't have enough memory and it would show yellow and, and I tried to set up a system with not enough memory. I, I, I have the latest running on these systems and, and we, we've been doing stuff all along to try to make sure that our software will provide benefit even when there's a minimum amount of, when there's a minimum amount of uh, 
of memory. So I wasn't actually able to get a system into a state where it didn't have enough memory. I mean, I could have if I'd have worked extra hard. But, but we will actually tell you that there's a limited amount of memory. And in these, um, in these icons, essentially, it'll, it'll tell you that there's not enough memory for us to do a great job, or there just isn't enough memory for us to do anything at all. And um, so that's essentially how you're able to tell that. You can just see that, look, there's just not very much memory. We actually tell you how much memory um, the cache size is, the average cache size. You notice on this, it's only, uh, let me widen this, and um, it's only 0 0.767 megabytes of cache for this particular thing. Um, and that's uh, 0 0.767 gigabytes. So 767 megabytes on that particular system is all that I have in cache. And the minimum size for cache was, was just about 500 megabytes. So we give you that data and we'll tell you that we're not getting enough memory to actually be effective or that we don't have enough memory to cache at all. Because one of the things we do is we will not use memory if you need the memory. We automatically give it back. So if you're using all the memory on your system, your applications, we just cut back. When there's lots of memory to be used or just a little memory to be used, we just go and grab it. And we do that dynamically on the fly. And we do it based on, we have algorithms that tell us, this isn't like first in, first out or last in, first out. We get, we actually analyze the IOs that you're doing, and we load our cache based on extremely high probability that the data that will be in our cache is the data you need. So when we decide we have to give memory back, we actually do it in such a manner that we give back the, the pieces that, that are least likely to actually get hit by you. So we are constantly adjusting what's there specifically and so that's essentially I know I was a little long winded on that answer, Gary. Well, well thanks, Greg. Yeah, that'll help our users. Now a lot of these users got a pretty good bar here from previous attendance. But you know, one thing we do recommend to them is that if you really want to test this and see the full benefits, you should install it on all, you know, the the VMs on that hypervisor. So one thing that I believe you could probably just show them here that with this velocity management console, you, they can deploy a trialware version out to the other systems so they can see the full benefits. And as we, you know, indicated before, even though you, you may just put it on your heavy hitting systems, you do want to put on your other systems too to see the full benefit because the other systems, they may not be as IO intensive. But they're still using bandwidth across, you know, those same storage and hypervisor uh, paths. So by putting it on all of it, you're you're getting the full benefits. So it does have that. As Rick uh, is showing right now over on the right hand side, you can see you can deploy Velocity easily to these other ones, and without the license, it will put a 30-day uh, trialware version on there. Yeah, and the truth is, I I only have spun up the VMs that are actually have it already on, so I can't really do a deployment thing. But yeah, it's it's easy to just go deploy. You can select in your domain where you want to deploy to, select a system, um, save your selection, go through the deployment. I'll, I'll go up to the point. I won't actually do the deployment, but but it's real simple. We you can set configuration policies if you want, and and I don't have any set on this particular. Um, this particular little mini domain that I have set up for demoing. But um, you can schedule when you wanted to do the deployment. Um, so there's a configuration. I don't have extra configuration. But you can do all kinds of things. So let's say you have a specific system where you need to make some adjustments to how we do. Or let's say you have a system you're really, you just want to defrag everything. You know, For whatever reason, that makes sense to you. You can set configuration policies and then go, and then you can decide, I want to schedule it now or I want to do it whenever. But um, so yeah, it's real easy to deploy. And like Gary said, you get a 30-day if for some reason, um, if for some reason you don't, uh, uh, you don't have a license now, you're just demoing it or whatever kind of thing. So yeah, it's real simple. 
to deploy from here to wherever you want to go. Okay. And you know, uh, the users that don't have it, uh, just contact your uh, the respective sales rep or SE, and they can uh, they'll coordinate with you on getting the velocity management console so you could use it here. Okay. Well, Rick, I don't see any more questions right now. Uh, let me check the chat box just to make sure. But no, I don't see any more questions here. Uh, okay, great. Well, thank you, uh, GQ, and thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, awesome walkthrough across uh, all of our environments. And so, given that while Rick was talking and moving around, I have the luxury of uh, playing in the background here. So here's a peek at what Rick was talking about on the VMC, the Velocity Management Console. And while his were all green, you can see here that the yellow and the red identifiers have popped up. And as Rick said, yellow saying, you know, IntelliMemory has limited memory to work with, consider adding more memory. And red is saying, there just isn't enough there for us. You know, give us more and we can do more for you. And, and I just want to share with everybody, too, uh, being involved with, with hundreds of our customers here in the East that have, that have upgraded and implemented the new VMC and Velocity 7, that this is a great benefit to them to be able, you can even do a little Robin Hood and steal a little memory from one and put it to another, et cetera, et cetera. So, so again, Rick and GQ, this is a such significant enhancement to already significant software. So as GQ even mentioned, from a next step uh, and a contact standpoint, uh, if you haven't already, you know, get in touch with us and let's schedule a dashboard review. And we would be more than happy to send you a trial host license to install across all your VMs on that host or even multiple hosts. Deploy with the VMC. It only takes minutes to deploy let it run for a week or two, because as GQ mentioned, while you can optimize on one VM, there are other multiple VMs that are, that are creating a lot of unnecessary I.O., kind of the noisy neighbor effect, and we mitigate all of that using our patented I.O. reduction software. Contacts are mentioned below, uh, as GQ mentioned, but again, anywhere from our uh, website, you can get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to work with you to expand it across your environment. Uh, GQ, uh, anything else? Any other questions come across? No, that's it, Dan. Okay, well, well thank you. And Rick, any, any closing statements? No, I'm, uh, that's all I had. Awesome, well, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And again, take us up on our offer. Put us across, you know, multiple VMs on a host and see what we can do for you. You know, we guarantee to reduce at least 30% of your I.O. to your back-end storage. So, so you know, make us, uh, make us stand up to our word and, and put us across all of them. We'd love to work with you. Folks, thanks very much for, for joining a previous webinar, for installing the NFR that we sent you, and for, for listening to, to Rick today and, and walk through uh, the demonstration that he provided to us. Again, we all look forward to working with you. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dan.